Tony, listen. Out of the top three, if the Bulls had a chance, which one of those players would you would have would you have preferred and why? Uh, Lamelo. Um, I thought that Anthony Edwards was the most physically gifted player out of the three, um, in terms of uh, you know leaping ability and athleticism, uh, but the most skilled player, and in terms of who can have the most impact on the Bulls as soon as possible, I think was LaMelo. Um, Kobe, I don't think, is the playmaker mm -hmm. uh, at all. I think his skill best serves as uh, a shooting guard, and I think ultimately he may be a Lou Williams type, ultimately, but you got to see, you know, what it looks like with him starting for a long period of time. You got to see what that looks like. Yeah. You know, I expect Kobe to get a lot of starting. I expect him to start from, you know, from yeah. the top. Yeah. Uh, but LaMelo would allow guys to be the best that they can be uh, in terms of scoring output. Zach Levine, you know he's a scorer. Um, I think having LaMelo would have gave, given him opportunities to be that. Uh, the person that really would have benefited would have been Laurie Marketing. Uh, because he, as we've seen, you know, in the last, you know, year, uh, and I, I get it, it's under Jim Boylan. So take that, you know, as you will. But to a certain degree, you got to, you know, go out there and create something. And he couldn't do that, you know, on his own. So I think having LaMelo to be able to set the table uh, for the who is who's coming into the league will be an elite passer. Mm -hmm. uh, just just flat out like tricky, at, tricky. at worst, he will be a top five or six passer in the NBA at his absolute worst. Right. And I think that is a huge value uh, now at the at the NBA level. So uh, Laurie would have seen a boost. Uh, Wendell Carter uh, would have seen a boost in his you know offensive uh, output. So I think that uh, Lamelo would have been the guy for the Bulls to take uh, if he if the Bulls were allowed to get him. Listen, on a side note, I got to go to a side note. So how frightful of you that your baby was going to get traded away? Oh, I was uh, here. Yeah. I had big plans for uh, Wendell. We, I mean, I was reaching out uh, to the Bulls for some Black History stuff <laughs> that I wanted to do for Wendell. So I was in there nervous, like, man, if they trade him, we gotta change some stuff. <laughs> was this was this Black History stuff all based off of the Asian Tiger Dragon that was supposed to be Black Panther coming <laughs> to America that was on the Gucci print from Draft Night? Is this what the Black History stuff was based off of? Okay. The Wendell love. I mean, I just need him. Let's it'd be different for even healthy for these two years. I'm mm -hmm. with y'all on the Wendell love. All mm -hmm. right. I'm with you. But it's just like people were in the streets with pitchforks when they heard that the Bulls may move him out for a better player. I'm just gonna put that out there. All right, getting back to it. That David Show, Tony Gill, following with the Tony Gill. Uh Tony, the players that were picked after the fourth pick. All right. So the players that, and some of those players were people that uh, were players that people had in the mock draft going to the Bulls. Now, it doesn't have to specifically specifically be those players, but what players after the fourth pick would you have probably preferred the Bulls to pick instead of Williams? Oh, uh, Killian Hayes. I was a oh, Killian guy. Yeah, that was that was my guy really from, you know, from the jump uh, in terms of because I'm looking at. You know, the ball, I mean, they could have went with a, you know, another wing player since the rest of their wings aren't healthy ever. Uh, so I could have saw that. But I thought if they were going to ride this roster out to see what it looks like, to see what it could be at most, they needed a, a guy that could set the table. Uh, and I thought if you couldn't get LaMelo, who is the best uh, out of this draft in terms of doing that, Killian Hayes was the next best thing. Uh, again, he went overseas, uh, played very well overseas. Uh, his father, he wanted to go play Come back. basketball. Yeah. His father was like, "Nah, you're gonna go over here and play with professionals if you want this to be your dream." So, uh, and and, it, and he proved and he was proven right. He was a top ten pick in the NBA draft. So, um, I like Killian Hayes. I like the way he plays. I like uh, the maturity in his game. Um, it, again, it's only second best to LaMelo, who just happened to be the best passer in this draft. And I thought that, that if they wanted to see what this roster could be like uh, at full max potential next year, I thought Killian Hayes would have been the pick. So my Killian Hayes, I was like Killian Hayes over Tyrese Halliburton, right? Mm -hmm. But to be honest with you, after reviewing more tape, 
I felt like one because his name was Killian and my name starts with the K. Mm -hmm. But uh, and he was he was coming from France. But after reviewing more tape, I really start to be down on his athleticism. Like for him yeah. to be six yeah, five, right. yeah, no, him to be six five. I was like, Shorty can't jump for nothing. He's tall. <laughs> I was like, I don't know about this. I was like, let me see some more of that Halliburton tape over here real quick. Right? I was like, I think I'm wrong with the Killian thing. Like talking to to Matt Peck. And he's a Killian Hayes guy too. Mm -hmm. And I was the interview from this week. And I I went and I watched more Killian Hayes. And I was like, Kill, I don't know if you're right about this kid right here. Now, again, <laughs> at point guard, you don't necessarily you don't have to be yoking on people at point yeah. guard. You know what I'm saying? But it's still it, it, it's beneficial. And I'm not even just saying as far as getting up to be able to yoke on somebody, but it's mm -hmm. beneficial to be able to get some lift on your lobs when you're getting into the paint. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing where I start to be like, okay, maybe on my Killian point, uh, maybe on, outside of Killian, who else would you prefer perhaps the Bulls to take? Um, I guess the next player would be Halliburton. Mm -hmm. um, again, an another guy, uh, Iowa State, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, he's a bigger, you know, guy, but again, Point guard, a guy that can you know set the table for the rest of his teammates. Uh, definitely more athletic than than Killian. Yes. Uh, I was giving Killian the slight edge just because he was going to make the the most impact right away uh, because of his experience over overseas. Mm -hmm. But uh, Halliburton's, gonna, I think, he's going to be a solid player. Um, maybe at his low point, maybe Evan Turner esque mm. at the mm -hmm. low. Ooh, you giving him something if you wait, wait. What Evan Turner are we talking about? Like Evan Turner when he was getting buckets, or like when it was like who was going on like Evan Turner? Like like Portland, Evan. Okay, Turner. okay, okay. Guy okay. at his low point, guy come off the bench, be able to you know facilitate and yeah. do, do a little bit of everything. Uh, pretty solid, you know, defensively uh, because of his size and length. So that's that's kind of the where if if you're going to think that way, if you're you know. A, uh, in management, like, all right, what's the low point on this guy? Right, right. The low point, if he turns out, and I don't think having Evan Turner in your team is, is, is a bad that big of a deal. I, yeah, I mean, again, I'm ha I'm I'm happier that they didn't go because I think I'm happier they didn't go with the ceiling because I'll say this, and you you, you alluded to it earlier. I don't think guard packs would have chosen Patrick Williams, hmm. right? I think they would have went with one of the surer bets. Listen, they would have even went sure. They would have went with the sure bet, or they would have taken uh, Killian Hayes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like if they were going, they were going to vacillate crazy. It was going to be foundational college guy like Ob Topping, mm -hmm. right? Or European guy that's like I don't even know what's going on right now. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. look, for instance, like Dene Aja, like that. It would have been something like that. But I don't think they would have went Patrick Williams because of the fact that one, he was a bench player. I think that would have scared them off. You know, mm -hmm. like and the, the years that we've seen them, they've never necessarily done that. So I don't think they would have done that. But listen, that David show, Tony Gill, lucky enough to be on with us. Tony, what, for you, what was the worst pick and who who had made the worst pick and who made the best picks from last night? Man, see, with this draft, like after three, this crap like, shoot. Right. <laughs> and like I don't I don't know if there was you know, a reach to be had. Like you can make the argument the Bulls reached. The Bulls seem to be the yeah. biggest reach. That's right. how in terms of everybody that, that made selections uh last night. But yeah, I couldn't I couldn't tell you um be, just because like now obviously every draft they're gonna be players, you know, back ends and second round where you'd be like, oh how come we didn't see that? But like Without the revisionist history, we're going to be like, yeah, everybody was a crapshoot at this point. And everybody, right. I think, was just looking for a solid contributor, especially in a, where, you know, they're not going to get a lot of camp. You know, mm -hmm. it's, going to be, it's going to be a weird season, you know, next year. So we probably won't see unless somebody just, you know, comes in spectacular. Like, they got to get ready to play a man's game, you know, really quickly. Uh, so... It's going to be a weird, weird season. I don't know if there was somebody that, you know, just objectively failed. I didn't see anybody just super, you know, angry about the pick. There, there were a lot of confused Bulls fans. I will say that um, last night, like not really knowing who Patrick Williams was, which, you know, I get. It's understandable. But yeah, it's understandable. But I, I, I've been saying this to, you know, a lot of people that 
this is just a wait and see. You put a pin in this. You put a pin in this draft as, all right, this is the first skeptical kind of move that we are <laughs> <doing. Okay. laughs> hey, sus. Right. You don't you don't mention it just now. You don't kill him for it now because again, we don't know what he can turn into. Mm-hmm. But this is going to be the first time because the rest of the moves were easy, right? You know, you fired Gar uh, Gar Foreman, you moved John Paxson kind of out of the way, you fired Jim Boylan. All those were givens. This was the first move where we get to see, okay, all right, we're gonna let you rock. Mm-hmm. But you know, if this doesn't turn out, if he's Chandler Hutchinson part two, you know, that's his own you. Don't listen. Don't you put that on him, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> My Patrick Williams will not be Chandler Hutchinson. Chandler Hutchinson not have been drafted and promised that he was going to be picked up. All right, don't you put that on Patrick. Patrick Williams is a I'm just saying. I'm, I'm, giving, I'm giving it room to go either way. You know, I'm giving him the room to, to be if he can be. You know, Scotty Pippen in your comparison. I'm not saying it's going to be Taylor Hutchison. That's that's a wide berth. I'm allowing it to go either way. I, I, I don't say Scott because I, I will say this on a not as a knock on him. Hmm. I don't know if he'll ever have that pure dog in him where it's like I'm going to get my point. I, I think best case scenario for Patrick Williams is probably six, seventeen points. Um, you know, seven rebounds, maybe a few assists. You know what I'm saying? Like I think that's where he'll be. He he'll, but I, if he to me his ceiling will be when the moment's there is when he pops to twenty something odd points. You know what I'm saying? Like or he's the guy that's running down the dude and blocking the shot. You know what I'm saying? With the fact that he's a rim protector, the way that he's a rim protector, there's very times has jumped very well when it comes to rim protection when he's off the ball. All right. So I don't want to ask you who won the draft because basically you just told me we don't know. We all know. We all know. We're probably not. I do have. A, I do have one that I do like though. Oh, okay, give it to me. I remember when it happened. Um, R.J. Hampton to the Denver Nuggets. I know you love that. I was listen, like, when I saw that, I was like, "Listen, I'm not gonna lie." When I saw that, I was like, "Mother, motherfuckers." <laughs> You keep doing it, don't you? You got Michael Porter Jr., right? And then you go, snake it out. I was like, I thought like the 10 of them running together. I said, this ain't even right, man. I was like, yeah. Yeah. that one kind of got to me a little bit, to be honest with you. Because, I mean, again, uh, RJ Hampton, I mean, he's not, you know, the best passer of the draft, yeah. but he is a willing, you know, facilitator. He's more of a scorer. And um, if the Gary Harris thing doesn't work out from a health, you know, standpoint, uh, uh, Jamal Murray having a running mate in the backcourt uh, like RJ Hampton, if if he turns out to be, you know, uh, you know, the player that, you know, people think that he can be, mm-hmm. Denver might get a whip. Dude, the thing is this. I'm going to tell you how they damn near insulate themselves from him not being the player. Mm-hmm. The knock that's been on RJ Hampton for the last year, basically, is his feel of the game. It's mm-hmm. kind of like, yeah, Shorty has the tools, but he kind of doesn't know how to put that ish together. You know what I'm saying? Like when you read between the lines, like it's like he doesn't know really how to accentuate himself in the game. And yeah, he can pass, but he's not like another. He doesn't have to be a playmaker. But as you just said, dog, when you got who they they got, first of all, their center's the point guard, right? right? Then you got a dominant player in Murray. You got Michael Porter Jr. coming on. All Shreddy got to do is run. You know what I'm saying? Like that's all, like go. All right. <laughs> Don't doom, 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 doom. Like, that's all he basically has to – like, when I – dude, I'm happy you said that because I forgot after mm-hmm. last night because I got up in the middle of the morning. I was up for like three to four hours in the middle of this morning consuming draft fish. Uh-huh. And when that happened in the draft, I said, damn, Denver's going to keep Denver. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, you're going to keep – and it's. And I hate it because it has nothing to do with us, but you know how we wanted Michael Porter Jr., right? Mm-hmm. And it just – it feels like they stole RJ from me too. Because it's like, it just feels like it's like, you got me. You're sneaking SOBs, you got me. 